first. Hello, we are students from primary school in Opine, which is a small village located in the southeast of Poland, in the Małopolska province. We would like to present a video promoting the cultural heritage of our beautiful region. The film you are about to see shows our local cuisine, regional music, traditional dances, natural sites, as well as sacral monuments of the wooden architecture trail of our region. The Church of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Opine is a Roman Catholic parish church. It is located in the Diocese of Tarnów in Małpolska province. The parish was probably founded in the second half of the 14th century. The first church in Opine was built in 1565. It was destroyed during World War I in 1915. The current church was built between 1925 and 1931, according to the design of Stanislav Majewski, an architect from Przemysl. The church was consecrated by Bishop Karol Pękala in 1956. The church is an example of Neo-Romanist architecture. It was built of red brick and stone. There is a central nave and there are two side aisles separated by stone columns which support the ceiling with a cross wall. Figural and ornamental polychromy was painted in 1948 by Alexander Trykowicz. The main altar was designed by Kazimierz Mazur and made in 1945 after the Second World War by Józef Niziołek. The image of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary was painted in 1949. There are three side altars in the church. The first altar presents the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The second altar presents the transfiguration of Jesus. The third altar shows the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. The parish in Święcany was established in the second half of the 14th century. The first mention of the existing village comes from 1369. The first source of information about the church and parish in Święcany comes from the 16th of the 15th century. The Nian Dugosz mentions that in Święcany there was a parish church to which the village of Opine belonged. The present church was built in 1520. The entire temple is built from birch and belongs to the wooden architecture trail. It was altered and extended repeatedly in the late 19th century. 
A freestanding bell tower was extended and a chapel of St. John Nepomucene was added to the aisle. There is a very beautiful main baroque altar carpet in wood from the turn of the 17th and 18th century. The characteristic ornaments of this period are columns decorated with floral ornaments and everything painted white with gilded ornaments. In the church there are four altars. On the left the side altar is dated from the 18th century and dedicated to the Mother of God. In the upper part there is a painting of Saint Joseph with infant Jesus and angels on both sides. On the right we can see the altar of Saint Anthony dated from the late 17th century. At the top there are figures of saints with angels. This painting presents Eucharistic adoration of Blessed Sacrament, the body and the blood of Christ, exposed and adored by the faithful. It shows a prayer of all people from various social classes living at that time in this village. The second painting presents Saint Isidore. As the legend says, he as a young boy worked on a farm for a wealthy man but at noon he used to say angelus prayers. In this painting, the angel is working for Isidore while he is praying. His work on farm was always done on time, although he prayed then. Dead Child of Our Lady the Queen of Poland in Sfosowa. Dead Child was built in 1958. It was consecrated on the 3rd of May 1960. It is a single nave wooden church of log construction consisting of a rectangular nave and a narrow chancel closed on three sides. The sacristy is added to the presbytery from the north. The walls of the church are boarded and the nave is illuminated by large rectangular windows. The main altar of the church is in a baroque style. The painting presents Our Lady the Queen of Poland which was painted around 1960 by priest Adam Stachon. There is the 11 voice organ, which was made in 1972 by Mieczysław Wóźć from Nowy Sąd. Next to the church there is a freestanding bell tower with a bell called Mary. It was built in 1960. The Museum of Folk Architecture in Sanok is the first and the largest ethnographic museum in Poland. The Open Air Museum was established in 1958 by Aleksander Rybicki. It is situated on the right bank of the Sun River on the hill Biała Góra. 
It covers an area of 38 hectares and contains about 200 buildings which have been relocated from different areas. For example, there is the church of Saint Nicholas from Bonchaldolny near Jasło and there is a manor house from Święcany which was by, built in 1861. The park is divided into parts there that correspond with the division into ethnographic groups of former residents of the South Podkarpacie. The largest ones are dedicated to the ethnic groups of Boiko, Lemko, Dolinianie, Western and Eastern Pogurzanie. One of the sectors shows the history of the oil industry in Galicia. There is also a replica of a Galician town square from the second half of the 19th century inhabited by Polish, Jewish and Russian population. The exhibits include replicas of original Galician houses from different towns from this region. Inside all of them we can see furniture and items which were used by our ancestors living more than 100 years ago. There is also a true Jewish house and shop, a firehouse, a tavern, a post office, a chemist, a hairdresser and other. The Carpathian Troy Archaeological Open a Museum in Szczynica is located in the Ropa Valley in the Subcarpathia province. The significance of the museum comes from the fact that it was home to one of the largest Slavic fortifications in Central and Eastern Europe. The settlement in Szczynica is located on a former trade route connecting the Carpathian Valley with the Baltic Sea coast. The fortress is situated on the hill which gives it natural defense characteristic. It was built of wood and clay. The present day layout of the settlement reflects the early medieval system of fortifications. In the open air museum we can admire reconstructed fragments of ramparts, moats, gates, cottages, livestock barns. There is also a pit house and a forge. Above the hill fort there is a viewing tower. It is 44 meters high and from the top you are able to see the fortifications and admire the view of the surrounding Carpathian hills. During excavation works over 160,000 artifacts were discovered including pottery vessels bones and antlers, as well as flint, amber, iron and bronze objects, silver coins and decorations, a unique sword scabbard. Many of these are considered to be wonderful pieces of prehistoric arts and crafts. There is also an exhibition hall depicting shepherds from the late Stone Age and a reenactment of a Slavic cremation funeral. The Hillfort in Szczynica was originally started by the settlers from the Mieszanowice culture. They had a nomadic lifestyle and were mainly cattle breeders. In Szczynica they started building a permanent settlement and took up agriculture. The Carpathian Troy is currently one of the most important archaeological sites in Poland and one of the best preserved Slavic settlements from the early Bronze Age.
The Vilichka salt mine is one of the oldest rock salt mines in the world. It is situated about 14 kilometers away from Kraku, one of the most beautiful towns in Poland. The salt mine was established in 13th century and worked until 2007. It was entered on the UNESCO World Culture and Natural Heritage List in 1978. Now, the salt mine in Wieliczka is one of the greatest tourist attractions in Poland. The underground journey starts at the Daniłowicz shaft, which was used to pull salt up to the surface in the 18th century. The tourist road consists of the over 20 chambers and pavements, salt and wooden chapels and underground salt lakes. The heart of the mine is the chapel of Saint Kinga, filled with beautiful religious, low relief, sculptures illustrating events from the New Testament, carved in salt at the turn of 90th and 20th century. The floor is carved from a single block of salt and several chandeliers that lit the chapel are made of salt crystals. The Hutzelstadt Farm Gradyshov in Regetów is the largest Hutzelstadt in Europe and a great part of our region's natural heritage. It is a perfect example of an intact indigenous species of the Carpathian Mountains, which are a natural bridge that joins together Eastern and Western Europe. The Hutzel horse is also known as the Carpathian Pony. The name comes from the Hutzel people who lived mostly in the Carpathian Mountains in Ukraine and in Romania. This horse is small but very strong and resistant to illnesses. It is capable of living outdoors in difficult cold climate conditions. The Hutzel horses have a rectangular body shape. They are between 130 and 145 cm high. The head is white with large eyes and small lively ears. The neck is of medium length, strong and muscular. Dumplings ingredients for the stuffing one half a kilogram of cooked potatoes one cube of cottage cheese one onion three spoons of butter salt and pepper now we will prepare the stuffing for dumplings first chop the onion and fry it in butter Next, grind the potatoes, cottage cheese and onion. After that, add salt and pepper to taste. Mix everything, leave in a bowl and prepare the dough.
ingredients for the dough a 560 grams of flour one egg one cup of lukewarm water a pinch of salt two spoons of oil now we will make the dough and our dumplings first pour the flour onto the table top next Add the egg, salt and water, mix everything and cut with a knife. Add a little oil and knead by hand until all the ingredients are combined. Roll out the dough with a rolling pin and cut out circles with a glass or a jar lid. After that put a teaspoon of stuffing on each circle. Fold a circle with the stuffing inside and press tight the edges with your fingers. Boil the dumplings in salted water for about 5 or 6 minutes. Finally, Pour the butter with the onion and on the dumplings. Enjoy your meal! Our recipe for vigos. Ingredients 1 kilo of sauerkraut a head of cabbage, 70 grams of boneless pork neck, 30 grams of bacon, 2 sticks of sausage, 90 grams of tomato paste, 2 onions, 3 cloves of garlic, water, salt, pepper, red pepper, bay leaf, allspice, marjoram. Instructions. First, put the sauerkraut into a big pot and pour the water so that it covers the cabbage, then put the pot on low heat and cook for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, chop a head of cabbage, put it in a pot and pour water over it so that it covers the cabbage. Add a teaspoon of salt and cook for 30 minutes. Meanwhile, chop the onion, put it in a frying pan and fry in oil. Next, dice the bacon into small cubes and when the onion is fried, Add the bacon, then add the onion and bacon to the cabbage. Mix everything with the boiling sauerkraut. Fry the sausage in a pan with oil. Then dice the boneless pork neck, add a teaspoon of salt, a little pepper, oil and a teaspoon of sweet ground red pepper. Mix all the ingredients. Take the frying pan with the sausage on the heat and put the sausage into a bowl. Fry the pork neck. After 50 minutes, add about 2 cups of water to the pork neck. Cover the pan and cook for an hour. Then add the meat to the cabbage. cloves of garlic to the boiling cabbage. Mix everything and add 3 grains of allspice, 1 bay leaf and a pinch of ground marjoram. Mix all the ingredients. Cover the pot and cook for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, add fried sausage and tomato paste. Mix up everything and cook for 30 minutes. Be
this is ready. Enjoy! Three liters of water, 30 decagrams of sausage, 20 decagrams of bacon, two cloves of garlic, two bay leaves, five eggs, four grains of allspice, soap, seasoning, pepper, sour rye flour starter, instant sour rye soup, a spoon of sour cream. First, Boil water in a pot. In the meantime, cut bacon into small cubes. and fry it in oil. When the bacon is brown, put it in a bowl. Next, cut the sausage into pieces and fry it in oil. After a moment, put it into a bowl. Then peel the garlic and add into the boiling water. And bay leaves and allspice. Sour rye flour starter and instant sour rye soup. Buff with pepper. Next, pour some sour rye soup into a glass and mix it with creme. After that, add the mixture to the rest of sour rice soup. Mix all the ingredients and boil for about 5 minutes. In the meantime, boil the eggs, peel them and cut in halves. Put the eggs on a plate and pour sour rice soup. Serve the soap with bread. Enjoy!
Herode, it is a folk Christmas performance which is shot by a group of local, local inhabitants. The main plot is about the fight between good and evil. The content of the performance is based on a passage from the Gospel of Matthew, in which the king of Judah Herod orders the execution of all male children who are two years old in Bethlehem. The main characters are the soldiers, the king Herod, an angel, the devil, the deaf and a Jew. Wielmożni Państwo, jeżeli będzie powszechna zgoda, to Wam przyprowadzę króla Heroda.
Krakowiak is a Polish folk dance from the region of Kraków, the old capital city of Poland. Krakowiak is called Krakowian in English. Most likely the dance was created in the second half of the 14th century. It was a war dance often danced only by men. In the 19th century, Krakowiak became a popular ballroom dance and a national dance of Poland. Krakowiak is performed in traditional costumes, where women wear white shirts with broad sleeves and the colors decorated with lights. They put on colorful vests with sequins and rich embroidery. They also wear flowery shirts covered with aprons, coral beads, wreaths of flowers with ribbons and a braided hair, as well as high lace boots are all characteristic accessories of a female dancer. The men wear white shirts with long dark embroidered vests and coats, red and white striped pants tucked into the hiked boots, a decorative belt as well as a square hat with peacock feathers.